Now let's perform mass balance on an absorption column. There are basically four flows in and out of the absorption column. We have the liquid flow carrying the solvent from the top coming into the absorption column and we call this LA, L for liquid. It goes through the column and absorbs the gas and comes out of the column below and we call this flow L. There's also the gas flow that carries the gas that will be absorbed by the solvent which we'll call V and when it leaves the absorption column at the top it would have less of the gas because it gets absorbed by the solvent and we call this outgoing gas flow VA. So a general mass balance equation for this unit would be simply LA plus V equals to the outgoing flows L plus V. We can also write a mole mass balance. To do that, we need to specify the condition of each flow in terms of moles. For LA, the mole fraction of A, we can write as XA, while the liquid flow rate in moles, you can write as L. LA. When the solvent moves out of the column below, we name the mole flow rate of that solvent as L and the, and the mole fraction of A in this flow as X. For the gas flow, the gas flow rate, the mole flow rate of the gas flow is V, while the mole fraction of A in, in the gas is y and when it leaves the top we call the mole fraction of a in the in the exiting gas flow rate as ya and the gas mole flow rate is va the unit of la is mole per second while the unit of xa is dimensionless because it's a fraction the unit of l is mole per second as well. Same goes for V, mole per second, and for VA, mole per second. Now with those defined, we can write the mole mass balance equation. The mole balance of A is The incoming A, which is this one, LA multiply with XA, and also the A coming in with the gas flow rate here, is equals to the amount of the moles of A that leaves the absorption column through here and here. We can rearrange this equation to be the subject of y to form this equation. This equation is what we call the operating line of the absorption column. Now we need to use the equilibrium curve to determine the amount of moles in the solvent as compared to the amount to the amount of moles in the gas at a certain height in the absorption column. So this figure shows the relationship between the mole fraction of component A, the mole fraction of A, in the solvent 
and the mole fraction of A in the gas. The operating line that we derived just now would need to be above the equilibrium curve, like so. The operating line gives us the relationship between the mole fraction in solvent of A and the mole fraction of A in gas. The operating line will always need to be above the equilibrium curve so that the amount of A in gas is higher than the amount that it should be at equilibrium, which we will be able to drive A into the solvent. For example, at this point here, because the distance between the operating line when the gas enters the absorption column is a lot higher than the equilibrium curve, it would move from the gas into the solvent. And the longer this distance, the greater the mass transfer rate. We call this the positive driving force. Where the y, the mole fraction of A in gas, is larger than the mole fraction of A at equilibrium, or y star. The greater this difference in value becomes, the higher the mass transfer rate will be. So at the bottom of the column, we'll have a large driving force, which means a lot, of the, a lot of A would move from gas to solvent. But as it goes up the column, then the distance between the operating line and the equilibrium curve becomes less, which cause a lower driving force, which also means that the mass transfer rate would be slower. So to make sure that the operating line is closer to the equilibrium curve, then the height of the column needs to be taller. The operating line that we can derive from mass balance would be the minimum that the column requires. So with a given L over V value or L over G ratio, we need to increase this to 10% or 50% higher than the minimum so that the column would operate as efficient as possible. So for example, if it's at 1.25, which is the minimum, then in the actual column, we have to increase this to 1.3 to 1.9 to ensure greater efficiency performance of the column. We can use this relationship between the operating line and the equilibrium curve to determine the height of the column. Rate of absorption can be calculated by the following equations. R, which is rate, equals to Ky. K is the individual mass transfer coefficient. Multiply with A. A is the interfacial area per unit volume, which is basically the contact surface between gas and solvent. Multiply by the difference of Y minus Yi, where I is I is the component to be absorbed, and Y here is the moles of I in gas phase. Rate can also be calculated from the solvent side, which is Kx times A, and the difference between Xi and X, where the overall mass transfer coefficient for the entire column is just R equals to capital K Y times A Y minus Y star or the mole fraction at equilibrium. This is for the gas phase and from the liquid phase side is K capital K X multiply with A X minus X at equilibrium minus X. So these two is for levels within the column the different levels of the column, while this too is the overall mass transfer equation, which is for the entire column. We can combine the, the rate equations in the column to calculate the interface composition or the xi and yi. So r equals to kya y minus yi and R is equals to Kx 
a x i minus x we can combine this two since the rate in the gas phase and the rate in the solvent phase is the same equate them to each other and rearrange it for y you'll get y equals to minus k x a over k y a x plus k x a over k y a x i plus y i so this gives us, gives us the relationship between the moles of I in the solvent and the moles of I in the gas at different levels within the column. Now how do we determine the overall mass transfer coefficient? Looking back at this figure with the equilibrium curve and the operating line, we'll be able to derive the equation that combines the individual rates at different levels to form the overall mass transfer coefficients. Now we begin at a point on the operating line, for example at this point here, with a certain mole fraction of x and y. Because there is a driving force that moves from gas to liquid, it will move from this point downwards, but because of resistance, it will move sideways like so. So this point here, where the concentration is now xi and yi. The concentration at equilibrium is here and it should be at x star and y star. We can draw a triangle that shows this relationship. One is the actual movement of gas to liquid and the other is the equilibrium movement. And the overall mass transfer coefficient is higher than the mass transfer coefficient at each level. If we look at the overall mass transfer coefficient, it should be Instead of here, it should be around here. So what we want to determine is the overall mass transfer coefficient, but the individual mass transfer coefficient is this slope given by the equation derived before. Slope of this line is the same as this slope here. What we want to determine is the overall slope here. How do we obtain that overall mass transfer coefficient from the individual slope? We can do that by combining this equation with the overall mass transfer rate equation. Now let's calculate the overall mass transfer coefficient for the gas side. To do that, we need to combine this equation with this two equation already combined to form this. So to do that, first we need to rearrange this equation, form substituting this y into this equation. We'll get. Now we know that the slope here can be simplified to become m, which is m equals to minus kxa over ya. And this simplifies to bringing the m out and rearranging this, you'll get, and we know xi minus x from here is r over kxa. Now comes the problem of yi minus y star because there's no relation shown here. But if you look at this figure, you'll see that yi minus y star is equals to y minus yi. The difference at least is the same. So looking at y minus yi, it's this. And here, if we arrange this, oh yes, by the way, this should be neg negative and this should also be negative over here because uh, the solvent absorbs the gas from the gas phase. So in from the gas side, the gas moves out of the gas, so and when it moves out, means that it, it reduces in amount, thus the negative sign. And this yi minus y star, because it is equals to y minus yi, means that we can use this equation, which means that it is plus minus r ky over a. And since uh, all is r, we can just divide by r, and we remove all the negatives to become positive, times by negative 1, we'll get so from this equation, you'll be able to, you can relate the individual mass transfer coefficient, kx and ky, to the overall mass transfer coefficient. You can also perform the same calculations for capital KXA using the same diagram here. And also, and the trick is that we know that xi minus x is the same in length as x star minus x. From here, we can, we can also see that the overall mass transfer coefficient is made up of the resistance of the liquid side mass transfer coefficient and also the gas side mass transfer coefficient. And these are resistances to mass transfer. The higher these values are, the lower the mass transfer rate will be. 
that is the end of this video and I'll see you in the next one.